Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond This Games, and in this video I just want to go over the most recent release notes that have come out for Game Maker Studio 2. This is for version 2.1.0.204 that I received on Thursday, August 24th. So they've made quite a few changes in here, but there are some important ones that I want to go over specifically so that you may know how to use them now because they have made some important changes. The first one being the integrated debugger. Uh, they also have added resource tree enhancements, recent windows, which is pretty easy, and code folding, which is actually going to be very nice. And of course, the big thing in this release is a fully dedicated Mac version. So if you're using Mac, now you have a full version that you can buy for Windows and Mac and just use it on the computer of your choice. But I want to show you this debugger first because if you've been using the older debugger, it is now completely different. So if I press F6 on here and I go into the debugger, it is now integrated into the IDE. And so it looks like this. No longer is a separate window going to come up. Uh, it is all right here. Now they have pretty much all the same information. The new thing is a graph right here, which I can make a little bit larger. You can see that you've got memory usage and FPS, both uh, what it is and then the average of both of those. Uh, the code is right here and you need to click on an object in here and double click like on step event or something and then the code shows up in here so you can see what's running and of course you can always press F9 to create an actual stop inside of here and you can get rid of that as well and then you've got the play reset pause and the stop buttons which work a lot more effectively now that they're actually integrated into the debugger and of course the enable real-time bugging now all the windows you're used to getting information from are actually down here they have it under variables instances others and graphics and you can take these out make them into your own tabs if you want, pull them to a different screen or whatnot to get more information out of them. They're all right here, and to edit any of those, you can come into Debugger, and you have the Windows options right here, and of course you can do the Reset Layout, and it will change everything right back to how it was. But that's the new Debugger. It basically functions the same, it just has an entirely new look to it. So. Uh, if you understand how to use the debugger before, with a little bit of fiddling around, you can get this one to work pretty much the same as you did before, except that now it's not a separate window, which is kind of nice because these buttons actually work a lot better. Now, a couple of the other changes were the resource tree enhancements, and if you come over here, you can see that there are some changes to how this looks. You can easily adjust the size down here. You can press this little button to make it uh, the maximum size for how wide this window is which is kind of nice. Uh, and then you can also change the colors of pretty much everything inside of here by going to File, Preferences, and down here to the Resource Tree and the Colors. You can now change the background colors of everything. So if I want to change the background color of this entire thing, I could click on Red, click OK and Apply, and now this is red. But if we want one to be a specific color, we can also do that. So you have complete control over how everything inside of here looks. Now, I don't want mine to be like that, so I'm gonna take the alpha down to zero, make these transparent again. But you have complete control over how this looks and how bright it is. You can also change the text and the style of all of these. So you can see right here that if we come into labels, we can change the label colors as well. So we could make that blue we can make the style bold and the size 13. And now it's kind of hard to read, but you can see that you can completely customize this to see how you like it and what you would enjoy. So uh, that's kind of a nice feature that they have now. You can completely customize the resource tree to fit exactly how you like it. And I suppose I shouldn't make it completely transparent. That might not work, actually. And then we also have the recent windows down here, which is a tab in and all of itself. You can put this anywhere you like, but it shows you the most recent windows that you're using. So if I were to open up the OBJ wall, you can see here that it then shows me what I was using, and I can double click on it to go back to it. You can customize this inside of preferences once again to show only things that are open or things that you've used recently to a maximum or minimum number, which is really nice, and you can put that wherever you want. It might be useful, it might not be, but it's there if you'd want to use it, or you can just get rid of it and not have to worry about it at all. 
And then there is code folding support. Now, this is actually super nice. So if I come in here and I type a pound symbol and I say region, I can put a description in here that might be something like this one that I had. And then I can put an end region. And all of a sudden, I can now fold up my code just like that. So if I'm working on a very large project that has lots of code, now I can suddenly have just regions that I can fold up and I don't have to scroll through every time. And I know exactly what that region is doing. So it allows you to fold that code up in a much more manageable and easy to look at uh, way that I actually really like and plan on using significantly. But those are the big changes. Hopefully that helps you can understand how they work and actually how to get to them. The debugger is new. I recommend playing around with it. It is a little bit different if you're used to the old debugger, but it's still there, still works, has all the same information, plus a little bit of new stuff. That's all I've got for you. Thank you for joining me. Have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later. If you'd like to support me more than just liking and subscribing to my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, like all of the awesome people on the screen right now. They get to vote on upcoming tutorials and get one-on-one -on -one training sessions with me each month. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you later.